Good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you all. My name's Tom Livock. I'm from Access Pay. Really wanted to thank you all for coming, but also thank RSM and FinTech North for organizing this event. For those of you who don't know Access Pay, we're based here. We're based in Manchester, so we're homegrown. Uh, 10 years old, and um, we really are a FinTech. Um, so we connect our corporate customers to their, their their banks. We connect our corporate customers back office systems. So they may be using SAP or Oracle or Sage uh, for processing supplier payments. They may be trying to process uh, expenses or payroll or accounts receivable. And um, we're connecting those customers to their, to their banks. But we can also receive back the statement data. So uh, if you're they're, they're downloading statement data manually, we can automate that process and deliver it back into those back office systems. OK, so uh, maybe let's take an example to start with. Um, ITV is one of our customers. They've been with us uh, nearly from the start. And they have an Oracle ERP system. And they process their payroll, their supply payments, treasury payments as well come out from their back office systems. And we deliver them to their banks. Uh, and it's interesting, because ITV, you think of, um, or at, least, at least I do, being born in the, in the Northwest, is that actually, you know, they're a, they're a Northwest company, aren't they? Well, actually, they're not. They're a global company. They have, obviously, I'm a celebrity in Australia. They have studios in Hollywood. And actually, they have studios all over Europe. So we're actually processing payments for them on a global basis. Great. So what's that got to do with operational resilience? What, what's it got to do with it? So if you don't mind, I'm going to do a, a bit of a poll, if this works. So. Um, how do you currently make um, payments within your organizations? There's a few options. There's, there's three, actually. So the first one is, are you using online banking? So if you're thinking about your finance teams in your own businesses, are they using online banking for supply payments to make payroll or make expenses? The next option is, have they outsourced that? Have your finance teams outsourced it to a third party? Maybe it's a bureau. Maybe the bureau is processing those payments. And the third option is, based in the UK, Vax is obviously a key part of what we do in terms of making payments. So are your finance teams using using Vax? So could I just hear, show of hands for the first one, please? So are you using bank portals? Are your finance teams using like somebody's being very honest? Oh, somebody else being very honest. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So we have some honest people. Anybody using a third party? Might be a bureau. Ah, there's a couple. Good. OK, yes. And anybody using Vax? Yes. Great. So we have. Some using online banking. So what's the issue with online banking in terms of an operational perspective? Well, actually, if you think about it, what you're doing, or what your finance teams are doing, is they're allowing Tom, and obviously they trust Tom, but Tom is logging into your bank. And Tom is making payments on behalf of that organization. And you can say, well, that's all fine. Yes, of course, that's, we, we put some control measures around it. We've got an approval process, and that's all fine. OK, so what happens if Tom is also downloading that statement data and that Ferrari that he just bought or that new mansion he's just bought, what happens if he's tweaked that statement data so it just looks like it's a normal supplier payment? It's just for, Tom's just perform, performed the perfect fraud. So OK, um, how do we get around it? What, what are the options? Um, and they, the, so, so some of the issues we've, we, we've, we've talked about um, is why is online banking not secure? And it, it's, it's not for secure for, for um, the use case is, is the wrong use case. So if you think about your own individual purpose, when you're logging into online banking, of course, that's absolutely fine because it's your payments, it's your bank account, you're in control. But if this, this is a, now not your own bank account, if this is your business's bank account, then obviously that's starting to become less secure. So it's an efficiency issue because Tom is logging in and making those payments. It's a security issue. And also, it's a human error because Tom may not be feeling very well today. So he may have put the decimal point in the wrong place, or he may have put the sort code in the account number in the wrong way. So that's where those issues come in. OK? So it's not that online banking is not secure. It is that online banking is not the right use case for corporate payments and corporate statements. There has to be another way. So um, this, is the, this is showing the, the corporate bank account right in the middle here. Um, and the, the first option is that online banking that I've just talked through. It's a manual process. 
we've got Tom logging in here into the bank portal, logging into your corporates, your, your company's bank accounts and making those payments. So are there alternatives? What else can we do? And hallelujah, fortunately, there are other things we can do. So the, the banks offer different mechanisms of getting into this bank account. And if you think about these as doors, so just imagine there are different doors getting being able to get into the, those bank accounts. And the banks offer different doors that you can get into. It's just you need to know how to get into those doors and how to get through them. The first one is um, the bank will offer something called a host-to-host -host connection. And the, one of the beauties of that host-to-host -host connection is rather than it being a manual process like at the top, we're now connecting to a back office system. So we're now connecting to that Sage or Oracle or ERP, you know, SAP system, whatever it might be. And the reason why that's great is because now we can get a file out from the system. There's nobody in between that back office system where the, the payment's generated into that bank account. Great, so we've got one way of, of doing this. Are there any more? So the next way is somebody put, some people put their hands up, they're using BAX. So BAX is an alternative way of getting these, of automating these payment processes. And that, again, a file gets generated out from, this time it's a payroll system, so we're gonna generate the wages, that file gets delivered to the bank, again, automatically, without any human intervention. And the final way is SWIFT. So SWIFT, just imagine SWIFT is a large telecoms network, but it's not telecoms, it's in the banking space, connecting all the banks together around the world. And again, with SWIFT network, we're able to connect to back office systems. In this case, it's a treasury management system. Sorry for the acronym, TMS. And again, a file can be generated out from that system automatically and being delivered to the bank. So we have actually three different ways we can connect those back office systems automatically to the bank without using Tom sitting at the top, manually typing in. So we're addressing all the issues of efficiency, security, and human error. Great. Why don't more people use this? Why isn't this more out there more often? And the reason is because each one of these requires a level of knowledge and a level of expertise in order to implement it. There are effectively three options as a business. And we, we talk about all three, because all three are very relevant depending on the use case and the, the organization we're talking to. The first option is we refer to it as a DIY option. The, the, the corporate has the, in, the knowledge, the skills, the expertise to connect to each, any one of these themselves. The, the second option is to go to one of our competitors. So it's a third party, it's another, it's another payment, it's another FinTech that they're going to, to connect. And of course, the third way is access pay. So just the next couple of slides, I'm going to, going to talk through how we actually connect these systems together. On the left-hand side is those back office systems that I keep talking about. So we've got human capital management. Sorry, again, too many acronyms. HCM, human capital management. Basically, that means payroll. ERP, so that's Sage, Oracle, SAP, and so on. And then we have a treasury management system down at the bottom. So these are the corporates, these are our, our customers, the corporates back office systems. Access pay is sitting in the middle, and then the banks are on the far right. And we have two ways that we connect to those banks. The first way is going outwards, so that's a payment cycle being delivered. Those are those supplier payments, payroll, and expenses being delivered out automatically, going over the various channels to the bank. And the other way is we can receive that statement data. So rather than Tom changing that with those bank account details that he's just made those payments, we can automatically receive that statement information which shows accurately what uh, transactions have been processed in that bank account. Okay, so we're not using bank portals anymore. Tom is no longer sitting there tapping away, but we can add some more value to this process. And there's Looking at the top side of this, this cycle now, we have these four new things that we've now added. So the first thing we can do is we can validate the sort code and the account number to make sure they are correct. The next thing we can do is actually we, we have a sanction screening capability to make sure that the people being paid are actually not on a sanction list. So again, better control. Third level is duplicate payments and duplicate transactions. Um, if you've ever been in the, involved in this process, it becomes extremely difficult if you've paid a bank already and you've realized it's actually a duplicate transaction and you need to pay them again. That whole process becomes complicated trying to cancel that transaction. So we have the capability to, to monitor that before it gets to the bank. And the final point is the mobile and cloud approvals. 
one thing that we hear a lot is, is that, well, if I'm not logging in over here anymore, if I'm not going into my bank portal, well, who's going to approve it? Because at the moment, we have all our approvals sitting over here. So how can you, uh, we control that process? And we said, well, you've got two options. You either change the approval process that sits in your back office system to make sure that you're comfortable with that and it meets with your business processes, or we can add an approval process into this, this process. So adding additional control here. And, we, and this time, that, that approval process can meet with the business's requirements, the finance team's requirements, not being dictated to why, by what the bank actually states. So this gives us a much better level of operation control and resilience overall. We have about 1,000 customers. Um, some of them are quite small, and then some of them not so, much, not, not so small at all. So uh, ITV and Primark, you can see on the left-hand side. Um, what's probably interesting uh, for, this, for today's brief chat is to talk about NSG and DLA Piper. So NSG um, is actually Nippon Sheet Glass. Who's that? So um, 2006, Pilkington Glass got acquired by one of the largest global glass manufacturers, which is um, Nippon Sheet Glass. So it's actually Pilkington's. And um, they had a very manual process. Um, like I said, when I was using Tom as the analogy, talking through how, how making payments. And what they then did was they came to us and said, okay, we really need to automate this process. How can you help? And we've, we talked through basically those slides I've just shown you. And they then implemented that process and removed Tom from the, the, the whole process, which is great. What was then radical was that then allowed them to centralize their finance functions. So because they had this automated process, they no longer needed finance teams in each of the countries around the world. They're in 25 countries. They were able to centralize that. And because they were able to centralize, they then had the control globally of all their finance teams. Um, so that was really a, a significant change for them as a, as a business. The other one is DLA Piper. So uh, UK's largest law firm, uh, they came to us in, uh, in, in about 2016, been working with them some time, and the same, exactly the same process happened. They were using a very manual process, both for payments and statements. They were then came to us, we automated that process, and then what they've done in the past couple of years is they centralized and created a, a shared service center in Poland, which allows them to process payments and statements automatically on a global basis. So to, just to summarize what I've talked through, um, so firstly, uh, bank portals are for, for corporate businesses are a no-no. There's the efficiency piece, which is the main reason why customers come to us, but they also have security risk and they're prone to human error. The benefit of automating that process is not just to improve operational resilience, but actually it's more significant than that. It can actually transform how the corporate's finance teams actually work. And like I mentioned, uh, for NSG and DLA Piper on a global basis. Thank you for listening.